Welcome. In this session, we'll explore the Kronecker product of matrices. Let's consider this Kronecker product. This is named after the mathematician Kronecker. And this product is not widely used in linear algebra, but it's certainly a well-known old term. So what we'll do is let's suppose we have matrices A and C. So suppose that matrix A has M rows and N columns. And let's suppose the matrix C has, uh, let's say it's P rows and Q columns, so that we're keeping our are symbols very distinct. What we'll do is we'll define the Kronecker product of A, so it's a cross with a circle around it, times C, and this is defined as, what we do is we take the scalar A11 and we multiply it by C. Then we take A21 and multiply it by C, and so on, until we get A m1 multiplied by c. Then we, for the second column, we take entry 2, 1 multiply it by c, entry 2, 2 multiply it by c, and so on until we have completed that column. Now each column isn't really a column, it's a column of matrices. So this actually represents C is P, has P rows and Q columns, so this entire thing, which looks like a column of a matrix, is actually Q columns of a matrix. And then we have another Q columns of a matrix. And we continue until we get to the last set, which is entry AN1 times C, entry 2n times c, and so on, until we get to entry m n times c. And that will be, that will have m times p rows and n times q columns. So one common example is the 2 by 2 identity. So if I 2 by 2 is the Kronecker product uh, that would C is, this would be entry 1, 1 times C, which would be C, entry 2, 1 times C, which would be a zero matrix of size P times P by Q. This would be a zero matrix of P by Q, and this would be the matrix C. So if we took the Kronecker product of the identity and a matrix, what this has the effect of doing is this will take the matrix and it will propagate it up along a diagonal and then the off diagonals will be zero. Now this isn't truly a diagonal matrix. What we would say is it's a block diagonal matrix. So now let's take a look at some of the properties that we have for this. So I'll simply say for, we'll call them compatible. And what I mean by compatible is you can check this in the reference material for this lecture. If we have compatible A, C, and M, and what we'll do is we'll say A has M rows and N columns, C has, as we used before, P rows and Q columns, and then let's say that M has R rows by S columns. And there are some compatibilities that we can work out. This is associative and distributive. So by associative, we mean that the Kronecker product of A with the result of the product of C and M is the same thing as taking the Kronecker product of A 
with C, and then taking its Kronecker product with M. So if we want to, we can eliminate the use of the parentheses. And it distributes, so addition distributes over the product, the product distributes over addition. What that means is when we say that the addition distributes over the product, we mean that if we add eight matrices A and C and take their product with M, that that is the Kronecker product of A with M plus the Kronecker product of C with M. And here, our compatibility is A and C have to have the same numbers of rows and columns. And Kronecker product distributes over addition, meaning that if C and M now have the same number of rows and columns, then that is the Kronecker product of A with C plus the Kronecker product of A with M. And the transpose works this way, that if we take the product, the Kronecker product of A and C, and we transpose it, that that is the same as A transpose product C transpose. And then scalars are commutative throughout all of these. So now, let's suppose that we have A and C and M be known. So let's say for given A, C, and M with these, uh, with these appropriate sizes, and an unknown matrix, we'll call it W, and this has N rows and P columns, then there's a theorem. And the, the Kronecker vectorization theorem is, so let's, let's write this out because this is something that we'll use later in the course. The Kronecker vectorization theorem. We won't prove this, the proof is given in the reference material for this lecture, is the equation, if we have known matrix A times unknown matrix W times known matrix C equals M, this is equivalent if we take the matrix C and transpose it, take its Kronecker product with A, and multiply that by the vectorization of the unknown matrix, that that equals the vectorization of M. And so what this is saying is that if we are given A and C and M, and we want to solve for W, here A and C might not be square matrices, and so we couldn't simply find C inverse. And so trying to solve this might be a complicated problem. We don't know what the ranks are, etc. But what we, if we're given this complicated matrix equation, what we can do is we can take the transpose of C find the Kronecker product with A, and that'll give us a great big matrix. And then the vectorization of W will equal the vectorization of M. So, so uh, a particular application is if, we're, if we have A, W equals M. So this is a little more common in, is that we have a, a, we have a known matrix A, we have a known matrix M, and we want to solve for W. And what we can do is we can say that that is the identity Kronecker product with A, and now we could write the vector W, and then we could say that is the vectorization 
of m. And so we've taken this matrix equation and using the Kronecker product and the vectorization method, we can solve this as a matrix vector equation. So we could use, for example, LU decomposition, SVD, QR, whichever kind of decomposition or solution makes sense in this particular application.